Printers are one of the most annoying things you'll deal with in IT. But once you conquer them, and I know this is insane to say, they actually become kind of fun. Every printer is like a puzzle that you can try and figure out. In this video, I'll walk you through exactly how to troubleshoot printers the way IT help desk and sysadmins do. We'll discuss USB versus network, IP issues, drivers, print servers, and some run DLL tricks. Let's get into it. Okay, so a user calls in and they say, hey, my printer's not working. The first question that I'm probably gonna ask that user is, is it a USB printer or is it a network printer? And to be honest, a lot of times they don't know. So then I'll ask, hey, can I hop into your device with you? So let's hop into this user's device. Now it's up to me to check if it's a USB or a network printer. I'm gonna go to control panel, and I'm gonna go here to hardware where it says devices and printers, view devices and printers. Let's click on that. Here I'll be able to see all the printers that are currently mounted or sometimes available for this person's device. Right now I don't have any because this is a virtual machine that I've just spun up, but let's say that this was our printer. I will right click on it and I'm gonna click printer properties. Printer properties is gonna bring up this screen where I have a bunch of information. I have the printer name, maybe I have a location, maybe I have a comment like what the IP is for the printer. That's usually useful. But I also have this tab here that says ports. Under ports, I can see how the printer is actually mounted. If it's USB, it's gonna show up as USB. If it's mounted through the network, it's gonna show up as a TCP IP, an IP address. It may also show up as this protocol WSD, which is a terrible protocol that is like an auto printer mounting protocol. So I know if it says USB, it's USB. If it has an IP address, it's an IP. It might even show over here like a double backslash, print server, and then print name. Let me show you how that would look. It might look something like this, double backslash PS01 printer name. That might be how it would show up over here as well. This tells me that that printer is hosted on a print server. So all of this is important to know because it's gonna change the way I actually troubleshoot the printer. If it's a USB printer, the first thing I'm thinking is, does the computer actually see it? Of course, my first step is just gonna be to reboot the computer. Computer's been rebooted and it's still not working. Well, have I unplugged it and plugged it into another actual port of that computer? Maybe it's a bad port, we've seen that before. I also have another tool or utility that I can use on someone's device to see if anything's going on with these USB printers and it's Device Manager. Go ahead and type in Device Manager in my Windows search. Here I can pull up all the devices that this computer's using and I can see a lot of stuff about drivers too. The printer may show here under on other devices. It may show under ports, COM and LTPT. There may be something that says Universal Serial Bus Controllers where I can see it. Let's just say that this was the printer in question, you know, printer one. I can right click on that and I can actually look at some stuff like updating drivers, disabling the device, uninstalling, and then unplugging and then reinstalling is always not a bad read to start out. If the driver's bad, I can click update driver and I can search it automatically from this PC, but that's not going to search the internet or anything like that. It's just going to search Windows store of drivers that it already has. A lot of times I may have to reach out to a vendor and say, hey, where's the driver for this printer? They'll email it to you or whatever, you install it, and then you can browse where you actually put the driver and use that driver for that printer. Generally, vendor-specific drivers are going to be better than some universal Microsoft driver. So again, if you need, fully uninstall it and then reinstall it with a brand new driver. Now that's in the case that it's a USB printer. Really, I'm saying, hey, can the computer see it? Does it have a good driver? And then going from there, working with vendor for that printer. Let's say that it's a network printer. A network printer is a printer that's mounted over the network. It's gonna be mounted through either, again, either WSD or through an IP address. The fundamental question with a network printer is, can my PC reach that printer? Let's say that the IP address showed in here as 192.168.1.123. That's how it would show right here where it says ports. My first thing I'm gonna do is ping that IP address. So I'm gonna pull up a command prompt, CMD, and I'm just gonna try pinging 192.168.1.123. Here I'll be able to see, does the printer respond to pings? So is it reachable from this computer? If it doesn't respond to pings, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have the wrong IP address. Maybe my PC is on a different network. Maybe I'm on Wi-Fi and I'm supposed to be wired in. Maybe I'm accidentally on my hotspot still. But it does tell me, hey, I don't have connectivity between my PC and between this printer. How can I actually verify that the printer still has this IP address? I can actually have someone go or myself go to the printer itself, to that printer screen, and I can click on it and go to general networking and print off a network page for that printer. It's gonna tell me, hey, I have this IP address. I have this subnet mask. This is my default gateway, the way it's set. This is my DNS server. And I can compare that to the number that I have here. Now let's say that it is pinging correctly, but it's still not working. I can actually access that printer's embedded web server by going to a browser. So I can go to Microsoft Edge, and I can go to my printer's IP address itself. So I can go to 192.168.1.123. If this were a real printer that was plugged into my, you know, that was connected to from the network, I would be able to get into this embedded web server and look at that stuff like DHCP, DNS, 
default gateway, which is really important, subnet mask, and then IP address. So when I go here, I'm gonna confirm that it's on the correct subnet so that you know the subnet might be 255.255.255.0. Well, I'll compare that to my computer's subnet, ipconfig slash all, and I'll just make sure, hey, we have the same subnet mask because even if the IP is right, but the subnet mask is different, we're technically not on the same network. That's not good. I'm gonna probably make sure that it has a static IP or at least an IP reservation in DHCP. That's kind of more difficult stuff that we don't really need to worry about now, but I'm definitely gonna make sure that it has the correct default gateway as well. In this case, my default gateway is 10.0.0.1. If I'm on the same network as that printer, I want my printer to have the same default gateway, more than likely. And then lastly, DNS. Printers use DNS servers as well. We wanna make sure that they have the right DNS server so that they can resolve host names on the network as well. Sometimes they're calling home to their vendors if it's HP or Xerox or something like that, giving information like their toner information so the vendor can automatically send what they need or at least have a status of that printer. Okay, so we can see if it's a network printer, I'm looking at actual network connectivity. Let's say that its IP has changed. Well, I might wanna re-add it here in devices and printers. I might wanna say, hey, I'm gonna add this new printer. Here, I'm gonna go printer I want wasn't listed. And I might add it by IP address or host name. Go next. It'll have me put in my IP address. You know, let's say it changed to 192.168.1.124 instead of 123. I might re-add it in here if we're not using a print server. If we are using a print server, the printer's gonna show up something like the following. It's gonna show up here in my printers and it's gonna look something like, pull up a notepad, double backslash, whatever your print server name is, and then the printer name. That's how it's gonna show up in my devices and printers here in control panel. Now, if it's not working from a print server, then I can actually do some troubleshooting from the print server itself. So I would have to hop into that server, open up print management, and look at a lot of the same things that we're looking at. Like, hey, does it actually have that IP? Can I open the embedded web server? Okay, so if I right click on my printer and I click see what's printing, I can hop in and open up that print queue. I might see documents like wanting to go through but not actually going through. There might be something physically wrong with the printer. Maybe it doesn't have paper. Maybe it doesn't have toner. Maybe something's jammed in there. Maybe something's just not configured the way it's supposed to be on the actual printer itself. You can see there are a plethora of different things that could be going on with these printers. And this is where I really need to be able to hone in on, okay, when did it change? What changed? Did it change for everybody or is it profile specific? Why is this happening all of a sudden? Is there connectivity between this computer and the printer? Is there connectivity between another computer and the printer and then not this one? So I need, really need to be honing down, hey, is this a specific issue of this person or this computer? Or is it the printer itself? Or did something big change? And if so, what changed? And what do I need to do about it? Because there's a gazillion different options with printers, that's why people don't like troubleshooting them very much. But to me, it's fun. It's like a puzzle being able to hone in on, hey, what's going on with this? Where's the actual issue? And what can we do to fix it? Okay, let's say it is mounted through a print server, as I said. Double backslash printer, print server name, and then our printer name. Here's where I'm really gonna be testing user to user. I'm gonna say, hey, okay, it works on PC1, but it doesn't work on PC2. I know it's an issue specific to PC2, not necessarily the printer. Again, going back to we're not on the right network or something like that. Now, if it's not working for anybody, it may be that the printer is mounted poorly on the print server itself. Again, maybe it's still got a new IP address and the print server is pushing that old IP address out to everybody. If I go to my print server, I can go to this thing called print management. And this is where I can see all of those things. I can click on my print server. I could see my print server here, and I can see the printers that I have deployed. Of course, again, I don't have any deployed in this lab environment, but if I did, they would show up here. And here I can do all the same troubleshooting that I just did. I can look at my printer properties, I can send test pages, I can do things like that, I can look at the printer queue and stuff like that. So all of that is super, super, super important. I have some commands that I can auto remount printers from the print server as well. There's a series of commands called run DLL commands that when you first get in IT, you're gonna feel like an absolute wizard using them because they're so, so, so useful. Let me just show you one of them. And if you want all of them, you're gonna have to just Google them or ChatGPT them. ChatGPT is really good at giving you commands like this. But if I'm on this end user's device and I wanna try remounting a printer from a print server that's just not working, I might open up command prompt as an administrator. I'm an IT worker, so I have admin creds. I'll put them in and I'll pop this command in there. Run DLL32 and then I've got all of these print ui.dll again when you first start in it this feels like magic but you put it in and it'll just mount this print server i should say this printer name on this print server to that device so it's like a magical command 
And the cool thing about this command is oftentimes it works when other stuff won't work. So when you can't manually mount it, it's just saying like some random error, and then you plug this command into command prompt as an administrator, it actually works. It's super, super magical. Highly recommend if you're gonna go into IT and work in help desk, you don't have to remember the run DLL commands, but remember what they are because they will save your booty. They've saved me many times. Okay, and back to drivers on our printers. When I go to this person's device and I click on those printer properties, I can actually see driver information here. I can go to advanced, and I can see driver information here as well. If this is a network printer, I still need to worry about drivers. If it's mounted through TCP IP like we discussed, I'll be able to have this driver on my PC and that's what's using, I don't even know what drivers do, they just uh, coordinate, I guess, information from a printer to the PC, so, or rather from the PC to the printer so that the printer knows what to do with that information. So I need to make sure that this is correct based off of the type of printer it is. The type will probably show here, it'll also show here where it says model. So if it's an HP, LaserJet, you know, whatever, I need to make sure that I have my proper HP Universal PCL6 driver that actually works for that printer. Again, this is a situation where I'm gonna be Googling and I'm gonna be working with the vendor to see what's the best driver for this printer. I've also got some other important stuff. Let's say that I open up this and I click see what's printing and there's a bunch of stuff that's like trying to go through but it's not going through. I have some cool commands. The commands are the following, net stop spooler will stop my print spooler service. Okay, so that stops all of those jobs from trying to go through. And then I will go net start spooler, restarting that print spooler service. Many a time when you see multiple jobs wanting to go through here that won't go through, that spooler is gonna be the culprit. And again, it'll save your booty. Okay, so we've looked at USB versus network. Network versus print server shared. We've looked at drivers. We've talked about network connectivity. We've talked about going to the embedded web server of that printer and verifying things like default gateway, DNS, subnet mask. If we're still cooked after all of this, we need to start thinking, is the printer jammed? Is there something physical going on with the printer? Is it failing from a certain program? You know, does the test page go through? Does a Word document not go through? Or does some specific software vendor not go through? And then also is the printer firmware out of date? So if I do go to this embedded web server, I can see like it needs a software update. Oftentimes if it does, or it's three, four years out of date, that'll cause lots of problems. You gotta realize a lot of the printers that are in use nowadays, I've had companies that are very modern companies that have printers that are 20 years old. We need to be checking to make sure that this software is actually up to date. Printer issues can waste hours if you don't know where to look. But once you know what to check, drivers, ports, IP, DNS, print servers, it's not magic. Follow the path, compare it to a working setup, isolate the issue, and you'll solve 90% of these like a pro. I appreciate you guys being here. I know this has been a super fast crash course of everything printers. Printer properties is gonna be your best friend. If there's a print server, print management is gonna be your best friend. Isolating whether it's a USB or network printer should be the first thing that you do every single time. And then from there, you can troubleshoot the specific issue that's going on with your printer. Also, understand as a tech, you shouldn't be afraid to bring a vendor into the equation. Sometimes printers just don't work how they're supposed to, and vendors have more information than you have. That says nothing about you as a tech. It says that the vendor is just another resource for you to actually help you solve the problem. Many times I've got I've troubleshot printers for multiple hours, called a vendor and the vendor solved the issue for me in a matter of minutes because they had seen it before because it's something specific to their software. Appreciate you guys. Hopefully this has been useful. Have a good day. Be safe. Be smart. Make some good decisions and good luck troubleshooting those printers.